All right, here is the magic for what happens in uh, this side. This is where this uh, circuit is uh, pretty cool, or at least in my opinion. All right, so here is uh, SDA uh, low. Keep those colors, and I'll put blue over here. SDA. Uh, I can't even think it. All right, so this is SDA high. Red for the right side. Remember, this is still 3.3 volts. It's always 3.3 volts. Our initial condition is we're still in the idle state, but now it's this device that turns on. This is on. This is still off. We go from the idle state, and I want this device to pull my uh, node uh, down to zero. We see that eventually that's going to happen. But what we really want to happen is not just that this node goes low, but this node goes low. And remember, that's on the other side of this transistor. Its initial condition was 3.3 volts, because it was pulled all the way up uh, with this uh, RPU1, pull up one. Our pull up two, we will have, of course, current flowing this way through our uh, on MOSFET. Our initial condition, remember, uh, for this capacitor was a 3.3. This one started at 5. And this is where we need to start to uh, also draw some waveforms. All right, so you can watch me draw waveforms in real time. Here's time. Here's V high, which is 5. Here's uh, V low, which is 3.3. .3. Here is uh, V low minus 0 0.6. We'll see that in a second. And V low minus the threshold is the uh, final point on our curve. Right now we're going to look at just the right side of our circuit here. At this moment, this transistor is off. The drain is 5 volts, but the uh, gate to source voltage is 0. This transistor is off. So all we're going to see in our waveforms is SDA high falling. And it's going to fall. Uh, it's going to be in start. The transistor will probably be in uh, saturation mode at first, and it will discharge this capacitor. This resistor really won't have an effect on the speed of uh, the drop. So because this is saturation mode, our uh, circuit is going to go down like this, okay? And it's a constant because we're discharging a capacitor at a constant rate, which is saturation mode, constant current. At the same time, SDA low is staying the same. Nothing has happened on this uh, on the left side of this circuit. The transistor is off. All right. So now what's going to happen is we're going to this device and remember there's this transistor is off. All right. Now this node keeps keeps going down and down and down and down. But remember, we do have this uh, body diode. This is the uh, drain to body diode in this MOSFET. This is drawn outside. That's just so we don't forget about it. Don't forget. All right, that's one of my sayings. Don't forget about the body diode because uh, you're just about uh, just about will. This is part of the MOSFET. You have a three terminal MOSFET. Uh, you get this for free. You don't need to add this extra. So as soon as our drain voltage, which is the right side here, gets to be 0.6 volts or so lower than the source voltage or the anode to cathode, we're going to forward bias. Let's see here. Here's, uh, here's that point. This stays the same. Okay. We're going to forward bias this diode, and now current is going to flow this direction through the body diode. Our MOSFET is still off. All right, as soon as it does that, remember we're discharging uh, this capacitor. It started at 3.3, and now it's going to go down. Okay, and it's going to go down. 
both of them are going to go down. At some point, put my axis here uh, a little bit different. At some point, uh, our V low minus the threshold, there's my pointer, is going to reach, uh, we're going to reach this node. SDA low is going to be greater than, say, 2 volts. Remember I said V uh, threshold is uh, 2 volts for this. MOSFET is going to turn on. All right, so MN1 is going to turn on. And uh, the exact shapes of this are not uh, that uh, ultra critical. I'll put this over here. This over here, whoops, wrong color, wrong color. Okay, that's red. And then here, as soon as this MOSFET turns on, these two, this voltage is gonna get closer together. We're gonna have drain current flowing that direction, which is the opposite that you would expect in a MOSFET, but it's okay because it's really kind of a symmetric, uh, the physics are symmetric, symmetrical. So uh, we're going to accelerate the drop of this. We're going to get some KCL and then uh, go down like this. Oh my goodness. All right. And then eventually these are just going to get closer and closer together as our MOSFET turns oner and oner. And then finally, uh, the low voltage is going to be uh, pulled all the way down and then the other side is going to be pulled all the way down because we'll have current flowing through our pull-up resistor through the MOSFET at some point this will turn back off through the MOSFET and then uh, through this other uh, switch that's inside the, of the device so the SDA low on the left side will be just a little bit higher voltage uh, than the other one. But if we choose our MOSFET appropriately so that its on resistance is small, uh, especially compared to the pull-up resistor, then uh, we'll be good to go. These are the waveforms that you would expect to see. And indeed, if you simulate it, you see shapes that, uh, that look like this. Um, it helps when you're simulating this to make these capacitors to be large value. Uh, instead of the uh, 100 picofarads or so that would be uh, here. I think the specification says like 400 uh, pico. But really this is a time constant thing and uh, informs what your rise time is with this RC time constant. Thanks for watching.